Ah, yes, the mech. Ever since the invention of the tank, mankind has gazed upon these massive gun-toting armored vehicles in wonder and thought, you know what that thing needs? Feet. Giant, cumbersome, easily trippable feet. Yes, not only native to the world of anime, the giant humanoid robot has fascinated many people. While Japan tends to favor lithe, clean, colorful, almost human, agile robots that move with grace, America seems to favor more realistic, hulking, metal, missile-launching monstrosities with legs. Now that one of the most famous mech warfare franchises has found its way into open beta, let's take a look and see how this game fares in a purely online form. This is the MMO Grinder, and it's time to look at Mech Warrior Online. Mech Warrior Online, abbreviated MWO, is a continuation of the long-running Mech Warrior series, where walking robot tanks meet on the field of battle. My personal experience with the Mech Warrior series begins and ends with the Mech Assault series on Xbox, and while I am well aware Mech Assault has as much to do with the Mech Warrior experience as NBA Jam has to do with playing a basketball game, I'm not completely ignorant to the mech genre, having played the hell out of Earth Siege 2 a decade prior. So don't worry about me unfairly judging this game in comparison to Mech Assault, aka Baby's first Mech Warrior, but I will be mentioning it to clarify that this Mech Warrior is a whole different ballgame. So let's get this started and see how the game fares in a purely online multiplayer format. As the opening logos proudly state, this game is powered by CryEngine 3, and puts a bit of strain on lower-end computers. I purposely chose to put my graphics on medium for the sake of smoother recording, they came across just fine like that. Your view is primarily from the inside of the cockpit, another point against former Mech Assault players as you're not looking at this mech in third person, so getting used to the limited field of vision and knowing you can be easily attacked from behind is imperative. Other mechs on the field have an identifiable and distinctive shape, and knowledge on what other mechs look like can give you an edge if you can't get an immediate lock on them. Weather and attack effects are also amazing, especially the snow areas, where visibility is severely limited and puts you on edge. Lasers, shots, and missiles are also bright and easily identifiable, so you know what kind of attacks are going around. Everything works as it should, but be wary about the system requirements before you try to start playing. I'd love to tell you about the music in this game, if it had any. You might have noticed that the graphics section had no music used, and instead just used the game's sounds. Well, that's why. The only track in the game is the title track, and matches in the menu screen are entirely devoid of music. Yet the options let you adjust sound volume and even has a music slider. Why is there even a music slider? Well, that slider does make me feel like it's something they plan to implement later, but as of right now, you got nothing. You know, with the intensity that some of these battles can reach, I can't help but feel like maybe I should just be adding in my own music. Fans seem to think this is the idea as well, while others are a bit torn about this. Some fans have been offering up their services to create an official OST for the game, and others providing their own tracks they personally like to listen to. So if you're searching around for the Mech Warrior Online soundtrack, don't be fooled, because besides this track I'm playing now, there isn't an official soundtrack at this moment. By the way, just because you wrote official in front of your playlist doesn't make it official. It makes you a liar. Sounds hold their own for being the only thing you can focus on. Each weapon has a distinctive sound when fired, and it helps to let you know what kind of weapon systems you're up against if you listen to them enough. You also get your fill of loud explosions, especially if you're being bombarded by enemy fire. One thing you might get sick of is the voiceover, a calm female monotone voice that plays almost constantly. You'll hear it when you're missile locked, when you're in an enemy base, when an enemy is in your base, when you're being hit, when you're overheating, when you're being damaged, and it can get grating. A recent patch seemed to tone it down a bit, and I didn't feel like it was as grating as it once was, but just be prepared for it, and know that it can be adjusted or muted. I guess I should warn you right off the bat, this game has no tutorial mode. You can't run around blasting targets or disabled mechs or AI bots, anything of that sort. As soon as you hit launch, your selected mech will be tossed into a battle with others, and that's it. If you want to learn how to play the game, you'll have to click on the links provided in-game, and they'll take you to the YouTube videos explaining various aspects. Or watch this video, I guess. 
Although those videos are probably going to explain it a lot better than I can. This game doesn't control exactly like you'd expect it to, as mechs operate more like tanks than they do people. You can't reverse instantly from going forward without first slowing and stopping. And you can't strafe, only steer. This may be a walking tank, but it still controls like a driving tank. Pressing WASD controls your legs. I say legs and not mech for reasons I'll explain right now. W causes you to throttle forward, tapping each time to speed up faster or holding to go at it full speed. Pressing S will decrease your throttle, and if you're stopped, will move you in reverse. Pressing X will cut your throttle entirely, and pressing A and D steer your mech left and right as long as they're held. Moving the mouse controls your torso, and you have a limited range of how far left, right, up, and down you can turn, which depends entirely on your mech. You can also zoom in your view by pressing middle click. You can also use your jump jets, provided your mech has them equipped, by holding space. But remember that you have a limited amount that slowly recharges, and be sure that you leave a little bit to slow your ascent so you don't crash your mech. You'll notice you have two sets of crosshairs, a small circle and a standard crosshair. The circle is your mech's arms crosshair, where your laser and ballistic weapons usually fire from, while the standard crosshair is your torso crosshair that affects torso-mounted weaponry, which is often, but not limited to, missiles. Some mechs don't have arms, so in that case you'll need to make sure your torso crosshair is lined up properly before you fire any weapon, and it's best to know what weapons you have fire with which crosshair. If you have an enemy sighted, you can lock onto them with the R key. This also helps with your missile targeting. Left click fires weapon group 1, right click fires weapon group 2, and all of your weapon groups 1 through 6 are linked to your keyboard keys of 1 through 6. Ah, yes, weapon groups, let me explain that. As your mechs are outfitted with many different types of weapons, all with their own cooldown, they can be grouped to fire together or separately. This way you can set up different weapons to fire with different keys or groups, like firing all of your laser weapons at once, or your ballistic weapons with another key, and your missiles with a new one. This is all accomplished during the match by highlighting the weapon with the arrow keys, then pressing left or right to select the weapon group, and pressing right control to assign or remove that weapon to or from that group. You can set up the same weapon to multiple groups, or all weapons to one group. Yes, while it's possible to fire all your weapons either by grouping them all into one group or using the Alpha Strike ability with a backspace key, this isn't always an ideal method for a couple reasons. First, long-range missiles not only require a lock-on to your target, but they will not work at short range. Many weapons have ideal ranges that are required before they can be used with any real effect. The second and most important reason is that you need to keep an eye on your heat gauge. Firing weapons, jump jets, moving, and even the environment you're fighting in all is an effect on your heat gauge, and if you use too many weapons at once, or in rapid succession, you can overheat your mech and force it to shut down while it needs to cool off. You can override this shutdown by pressing O if you need to escape or want to risk a final shot. I say risk because if you overheat it this time, you will explode. Heat also plays into the game in the sense of your visibility, or the likelihood you can be targeted. By pressing H, you can toggle your mech's heat vision mode, which not only shows you other mechs on the map, but you can use it to see the hottest parts of the mech you're fighting, and target those parts that do more damage. Other modes you can toggle are night vision, which really seems to have only one use on a night map, and an electronic countermeasures mode with J that scrambles enemy communication and targeting systems, although you'll need to have an ECM equipped to use that last one. Remember, all of these controls can be adjusted to how you see fit, and make sure you check your control options when you start the game. Targeting plays a big role in combat, as simply shooting a mech isn't as important as where you're shooting it. If an enemy mech has a highly damaging laser weapon, you can shoot at its arm to destroy that, effectively keeping the enemy from using it on you again. It's best to focus fire on one specific part of a mech, as that's the best way to ensure you disable or destroy a mech before it has a chance to retaliate. Missiles, on the other hand, operate a whole different way, best used to cause massive non-focus damage to a mech, either from short range or long range depending on the missile. To successfully target a mech with long range missiles, target a mech you can physically see or have a radar lock on, and hold your crosshair on that mech until you see the reticle turn red, then fire the missiles and they will seek out that target. Some players even strategize their mechs to carrying loads of long range missiles, and have other mechs get a lock on the enemies, as one mech being targeted by a teammate can be targeted by all teammates on the map regardless of how far away they are. This lets what the community refers to as LRM boats sit back in the base and rain death from above. Of course, the minute someone gets close range to them, they're as good as dead, because as stated before, long range missiles do no damage at close range. The game's modes are simple enough to grasp. First up, there's Assault, which plays a lot like World of Tanks. Two teams meet in the field of battle, and the goal is to either destroy all the other players, or reach the enemy base to survive long enough and capture it. The second mode, recently added in the midst of me reviewing this, is Conquest, a point capture mode. 
This one's a lot more spread out in terms of mechs everywhere, trying to constantly wrest control points away from each other. Again, destroying all mechs on the opposite side also results in your victory, but capping points increases a counter. The first team to max out the counter wins. You'll want to be very careful when starting out, and be absolutely certain to stick by your team. If you die, don't fret, as while you don't respawn, you can watch other players from the point of view in their mechs, switching between all living teammates, and it's good to observe how other players play in order to better understand the game. You can also leave the match if you're destroyed, and like World of Tanks, leaving the match renders the mech you used unusable until the match has ended. At the end of the game, the points are tallied and you gain credits that you can use to purchase mechs and upgrades, as well as experience on that mech if you're using a purchased mech. Starting out, you're granted a cadet bonus, which gives you a ton of bonus money that you can use to purchase your own mech, rather than being stuck with all the trial mechs. I'll explain about how this all works when I get to the cash shop. As of now, let's move on, as there's really not much else to talk about when it comes to the matches. This game doesn't really get too chatty. I can imagine it's more often you'll see groups of friends playing together, probably talking over a voice over IP program, or possibly the in-game version, available to toggle on the options menu. This is a game where friendly fire IS possible, and that's always one way you'll see chat light right up. Try not to fire upon your teammates, even if many other players seem to have no situational awareness. I can't count the number of times I've had to delay my shot, a shot that could have possibly ended in a kill, because some idiot in a light mech decided to sprint into my shot path. It gets really annoying, so just be aware of the position of your teammates so you don't go shooting them or blocking their open shots. You can chat with your team to give orders or yell at other players by pressing Y for team chat and T for map wide chat. Try not to confuse the two unless you want everyone to hate you when you accidentally tell the opposing team that you plan on rushing a point. No, I haven't done that, but I'm pretty sure it's only a matter of time. Starting a match is simple enough. Choose from one of your four mechs linked in the bottom corner, or head to the tab marked Mech Lab and choose from the mechs you've purchased. Once selected, click Launch in the top right corner, and that's it. You're auto-matched and placed right into the game. There's a drop-down menu that reads Assault, Conquest, and All if you wish to choose a specific game mode or just get thrown into either. One issue I see with this is that you can get matched with anyone in the game. There's no levels in the game, even though you can use experience to upgrade your piloting abilities and mechs, which, again, I'll touch upon in the cash shop. This is extremely unfortunate for trial mechs, as it tosses in your entry-level mech with players with fully decked out purchase mechs. Feeling useless doesn't even begin to describe it. You can group up with friends quite easily using the social button on the lower left. You can invite friends here and set up a group with its own separate chat until you're ready to launch a match. The game is an interesting way to balance the matches by assuring that a pre-made group is always matched with mechs of the same type. If the pre-made has three light mechs, two heavy, and an assault mech, the enemy team will have at least three light mechs, two heavies, and an assault. Some criticize that this gives the unparalleled advantage to pre-made groups, as it's highly unlikely that another pre-made group will have the exact same makeup of your group, forcing non-group players to fight against them. It's nice that, unlike World of Tanks, you're not limited to only bringing one or two friends along with you into a match, but I can understand why they did, considering what happens here. This pretty much places the game into a play with friends category right off the bat. Not because there's anything inherently wrong with the people who play, but in that the game just seems to favor it that way. Cash Shop uses MC and credits, MC being the paid currency and credits being the money earned in-game. There are certain items that can only be purchased with MC, and I'm sad to say that they're not all cosmetic. You want the mechs? Because this is where they live. And then click on Owned Mechs in the bottom left corner. Then click Create New Mech on one of your empty tabs. Here you'll be taken to the list of available mechs for purchase, many of which can be bought with credits, a lot of credits, as well as MC. Herein lies the problem. Purchased mechs are WAY better than trial mechs. You might be saying, well, of course they are. But this is a difference of night and day here. Trial mechs barely have a fighting chance against an earned or purchased one. For those of you who were watching my stream and saw that I was consistently getting blown up by other mechs, I was informed by somebody in the chat that the trial mechs you get are essentially worthless, constructed of tinfoil and firing spit wads. And what happens is essentially, as soon as you buy your own real mech with your earned credits, you find out that they are infinitely better. I didn't immediately believe this person until I saw the difference myself. I screwed up the hard points and I still lasted way longer in that match than I ever did in a trial mech. Still haven't blown up enemy mechs though. So unfortunately, unless you drop cash right away, you're forced to play with these trial mechs for a while. 
It wouldn't be so bad if they had the decency to pair you up with only trial mechs. It'd be like playing World of Tanks for the first time, starting up your T1 tank in a match and then being paired alongside T6s and T7s. You are that outclassed. I feel this is the reason the recent cadet bonus was implemented. You get a massive credit boost for your first two dozen matches or so, it seems, and it won't be long before you can afford your first mech. Keep in mind that mech classes affect their price, so light mechs are much cheaper. If you favor the lighter mechs, you can start piloting and customizing your own pretty early, but if you're holding out for a heavy or an assault, you'll need to grind out matches for just a bit more. The mech you choose can be outfitted on its hard points, which vary by mech type. Hard points can be outfitted with weapons and other systems, although many are limited to what kind of weapons they can carry. You also can't just shove a gun on every single part of your mech's body, either. As mechs have various slots and weight limits, and the bigger or better guns weigh more or take up more space, you will need to balance your firepower, utility, and the space you have to work with if you want to have an effective mech in battle. Remember that some weapons, like missile launchers and ballistic weapons, require you to equip ammo in a slot, or you won't be able to use them. And the ammo also takes up a bit of weight. When you finally decide on how you want to outfit your mech, make sure you hit save on the mech store to finalize any purchases and changes made, or you'll have nothing to show for it when you try to take it out into battle. Damaged mechs and depleted ammo also require repairs and replenishment, and you can opt to have your game spend your winnings on that automatically just in case you forget to do so, accidentally heading into the next match with a damaged mech and no ammunition. Another way to outfit your mech and self is with the XP earned in matches, usable in the tag marked Pilot Lab next to the Mech Lab one. In here you can tweak your mech skills, like being able to run a cooler without overheating as often, stop faster, aim quicker, and even turn your torso faster, giving you that extra edge in combat. Make sure that you have your own mech selected as mechs earn XP individually. While the mech tree uses normal XP, skills on the pilot tree are earned with GXP. Remember that you cannot earn experience on a trial mech, and you cannot modify a trial mech either. The rest of the shop contains mostly cosmetic stuff, like trinkets for your mech dashboard or different colors and camo patterns to outfit some individuality in this sea of metal robots. There's also the premium account option, which acts like it does in World of Tanks, giving you a limited amount of time in which you will earn experience and credits at a much faster rate than normal. Well, at least there's no gold shells this time. I can't help but feel that I caught this one pretty early on. It's still an open beta, and even then through a major update in the middle of my review time, forcing me to add information about the way the game plays. I may not be any good at this one, but I enjoy it for what it is. However, if you're more of a run-and-gun fragger and not willing to work with your team, you're even less likely to survive this game than you are in other titles like it. Here's my final rating. This is arena combat for those who like to think. There's a lot to keep focused on, being your enemies, teammates, weapon systems, your movement, even your heat make this a much more deeply involved arena combat game than World of Tanks offers. Fans of the Mech Warrior game should enjoy this, although, as I mentioned, I can't really compare this to the old titles, but the classic mechs are there. The sheer amount of strategy also complements the complexity of the combat, and should prove an interesting title for strategy enthusiasts. The level of customization goes far beyond what I see in many arena combat games and makes for some varied and interesting playstyles. Really, the best way to pay for this game is to get away from those terrible trial mechs as quickly as possible. While this does force a bit of pay-to-win stipulation on the game, especially noting the fact that some mechs can only be purchased with cash shop currency, remember that credits earned can also be used to purchase perfectly viable and effective combat mechs. It just depends on how fast you want them. Sometimes the slow pace isn't going to hold the attention of players, and a game where not so much as a shot might be fired in over a minute of playtime might not interest some people. If World of Tanks was too slow paced as methodical for you, you won't last a second here. The complexity of the game may be intriguing, but for others it might just come across as overwhelming, and they'll spend more time confused than actually enjoying themselves. Being forced to start with trial mechs is a complete pain, as they are absolutely worthless when compared with an owned mech. I really think the game would fare better if they grouped trial mechs with other trial mechs, but since you're tossed into any regular match, prepare to spend most of your matches in a trial mech dead or hiding. Finally, since the game's a bit of a graphical beast, some PCs might not be able to run it well, and this is not a game where you want to die or miss your carefully aimed shots just because of your low frame rate. If you can't run it well on at least one of the settings, don't bother trying this out. Alright, time to completely date and timestamp the hell out of this video! 
First off, I again will be attending MAGFest this year. Dates of the conventions are listed right here, and I will be staying the entire time and attending the Blistered Thumbs panel if you wish to see me during that. Also, with the season being what it is, and the fact that MAG eats up an entire week of my time, the next episode will probably be delayed a bit. Not to say I won't have some form of content up at that time. Keep an eye out. Also, for those that missed it or didn't know, I run a stream on occasion over at twitch.tv forward slash chaosd1. Come by and check me out, as well as the past shows I've done. Remember to follow me on Twitter at either account to see when I announce my next stream. Wait a minute, today's a... Oh, oh, um, <laughs> I should do something a little bit... Uh, um, uh, here you go. Did you hear that? I think something just exploded. Man, we are in a lot of danger. This is like Christmas. You know, it's better than Christmas. This should be its own holiday. Explosion Day. Happy Explosion Day, gorgeous.